Up until now, we've avoided really talking about trigonometric functions and the derivatives. So today we're going to attempt to answer the question of what are the derivatives of the trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, and also the less used ones of cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And to begin setting this up, we're going to look at the graph of f of x equals sine x. And you'll remember from your days of uh, trigonometry, it has a maximum of 1 and a minimum at negative 1. And then at pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi things get exciting. Go in the other direction, same thing. Negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 2 pi. And if you remember, the sine of x starts at 0. It reaches a maximum at pi over 2, back to 0, minimum at 3 pi over 2, and back to 0, doing kind of the same exact thing in the opposite direction when we are on the other side. So the sine of x is this familiar graph. If that's the sine of x, then what I want to graph next to it is see if we can graph the derivative of the sine of x. using kind of the same scale we had before with pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 2 pi. And what I want to notice as we graph the derivative, f prime of x, as we graph the derivative, I want to notice first off where the derivative is 0. Notice the derivative is 0 at negative 3 pi over 2. It's 0 at negative pi over 2. It's 0 at positive pi over 2. And it's 0 at 3 pi over 2. And also, I want to notice it starts out increasing. It starts out increasing from the negative 2 pi up to the 0. So that means it's going to start positive down to our negative 3 pi over 2. Then it's decreasing, meaning our derivative is negative up until it reaches pi over 2. Then we're going uphill and we're positive again up until the graph equals pi over 2, then decreasing all the way until we equal 3 pi over 2 then increasing or positive all the way up to 2 pi. And so we end up with this derivative graph. And what's interesting is this derivative graph should look familiar to us. Notice at 0, it starts at 1, and it's got the same shape as our familiar cosine of x function. So in other words, what we've discovered here is that the derivative of sine appears, at least from the graph, to be the cosine of x. Well, let's take the derivative of this graph. It's a little too tall. I have room for a label. And doing the same thing now. Whoops. Let's try that again. Let's see if we get something else familiar when we take the second derivative, f prime prime of x, or the derivative of cosine to see what we end up with here. Let's label here. We've got negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 2 pi. Go in the other direction. We have pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And again, noticing where the derivative is 0, at negative 2 pi. It's 0 at negative pi. It's 0 at 0. 
and it's 0 at pi. And again, it's going to be 0 at 2 pi. But this time, the graph starts out decreasing, which means it has to start off negative. So it's going to start off negative up until it reaches the negative pi. Then between the zeros, it's increasing. So the derivative has to be positive until it reaches the 0. Decreasing, indicating the derivative is negative. And then increasing, indicating the derivative is positive up until the 0. Now, what we might hope is that there's this relationship that the derivative of sine is cosine and the derivative of cosine is sine, but that's not quite the case because sine starts out increasing. This one starts out decreasing. It's actually flipped over the x-axis from the sine graph. In other words, this red graph here is actually the graph of negative sine of x. And so really what we found is that the derivative of the sine of x is equal to the cosine of x, and that the derivative of the cosine of x turned out to be the negative sine of x, at least graphically. So can we use that information then to learn what the derivative is of the tangent of x? Well, what's nice about the tangent is we know that tangent is actually the sine of x divided by the cosine of x. We have that property from trig, which means really all we have to do is use the quotient rule. The derivative of sine, we said, was cosine x times the denominator, cosine x, minus the derivative of the denominator, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Negative, negative makes it positive, times the numerator, which is the sine of x, all over the denominator squared. So what we have really is cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x all over cosine squared of x. But that numerator should look really familiar to us. We should recognize from our trig days that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So we have 1 over cosine squared of x, but cosine is just the reciprocal of secant, and so we end up with secant squared of x. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. Well, similar to what we just did with the tangent of x and using the quotient rule, we can work our way through all the other trig derivatives. So similarly, we complete all the trig derivatives. In fact, the remaining three are left to a homework assignment. But here they are in their properties. The derivative of the sine of x is equal to the cosine of x. The derivative of the cosine of x is the negative sine of x. The derivative of the tangent of x is the secant squared of x. Those are the ones we just played with. But the other three, which are left to an exercise in the homework, the derivative of the secant of x turns out to be the secant of x times the tangent of x. The derivative of the reciprocal of cosine, or, or I'm sorry, the derivative of the reciprocal of sine, which is cosecant of x, is negative cosecant x cotangent x. And the derivative of the cotangent of x is equal to negative cosecant squared of x. These six trig identities, at least sine and cosine, you should have memorized. But ultimately, we're going to have to be able to use 
all six of these trig derivatives. Six important formulas for us to learn. And that's what we're going to focus on today. Actually, that's all there is that's new. We can just combine all of this with things like our product rule, our quotient rule, our polynomial rules, and calculate a whole bunch of derivatives. So let's see if we can use these in a couple examples. First, we're going to look at f of x equals 3x to the fourth sine of x plus 7 over x. Now, one thing you might notice is that 7 over x we can rewrite. So let's rewrite it as 3x to the fourth sine x plus 7x to the negative 1. So we can use our polynomial formulas. And then we'll start calculating the derivative of x, of f of x. First thing I notice is we really have a product rule to start us off. We've got 3x to the fourth times the sine of x. So to do the product rule, we take the derivative of the first, which is 12x cubed, times the second, sine of x, plus the derivative of the second. The derivative of sine is cosine x times the first. And I'll just put it in front to make it obvious that it's not inside the cosine. And then after the product rule, we still have to take care of the plus 7x to the negative 1. 7 times negative 1 is negative 7, x to the negative 2. And we've got our derivative. Let's try another one that might be a little more involved. Let's say f of x is equal to the cosine of x minus x to the fifth times the cotangent of x plus the secant of x. Now it should be clear here we're working with a product, two pieces multiplied together. So we have to do the product rule for f prime of x for the derivative. So we'll take the derivative of the first term, or the first factor. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x minus x to the fifth becomes 5x to the fourth times the second, cotangent x plus secant of x, plus the derivative of the second. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared of x, plus the derivative of secant is secant x tangent x. And then we have to multiply by the first part, the cosine x minus x to the fifth. And we've got our derivative. One more for this video. f of x is equal to tangent of x minus 3x to the fourth over cosecant of x minus 7. Now we're dividing two functions. With division, we know we need to use the quotient rule, just like we always have before. The quotient rule says we take the derivative of the top. The derivative of tangent, we now know, is secant squared of x minus 3 times 4 is 12x cubed. The derivative of the top times the bottom, cosecant x minus 7, minus the derivative of the bottom. Well, the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant. So a negative negative makes it positive. Cosecant x cotangent x. times the denominator, or I'm sorry, times the numerator, times the first part, tangent x minus 3x to the fourth. And that's all over the denominator squared, 
cosecant x minus 7 squared. So today's video is really short because there's not a lot of new stuff to add. All we have now is we've added the six trig derivatives. And then we kind of tie them into all the other derivative rules that we've seen before, the quotient rule, the product rule, the polynomial rules, and just continue to practice taking these important derivatives. With calculus and derivatives, practice, practice, practice is the key until you can do these derivatives in your sleep. So go ahead and try some of these off the homework assignment. This video is shorter to give you more time to get into the practice. And we'll dive into these more in class. I'll look forward to seeing you then.